right, practice exercise number 40. You may use your calculator. Practice exercise number 40 is where we'll be today. There are just four problems for you to work, four questions for you to think through. And let's wait till everyone's turned there quickly. Bracken, practice exercise number 40. And you may begin.
let's go ahead and take a look at these together. And Dylan was first. Dylan says the driver of an empty bus <clears throat> picks up seven passengers at the first stop, drops off three passengers at the second stop, picks up seven at the third stop, and drops off three at the fourth stop. If she continues in the same manner for 20 stops, how many passengers are on the bus after the 20th stop? And then, to help you out, it says the answer is quickly found if you notice there are four additional passengers after every two stops, and you decide how many groups of two are in 20. <laughs> All right, so what's our answer? 32. Oh, that is not correct. All right, second was... You were done. Okay, held up a two, and then it looked like you started working again. Okay, sorry. So, Noah, that makes you three. Everybody add one number. All right, mm -hmm. so uh, Brandon, what did you have? Ooh, all right, Noah, we do go to you. 40, mm -hmm. right? So every two stops, there's four more passengers, right? Seven, drop off three, that's plus four. Well, the next seven, drop off three, is going to be four more, that's up to eight. So every two stops, you add four passengers. Well, by the time you get to the 20th stop, that's 10 sets of two. Every set of two, you're adding four. So 40 uh, passengers are on the bus. Noah, we stay with you. The driver of the bus filled the gas tank by putting in 21 gallons. Now, the gas gauge was at 5 eighths before she filled the tank. How many gallons does the tank hold? Mm, all right, we go to who is now number four. You would, that would be you since I held up a three. 50. Mm, all right, that goes to Lana. I have 33 and 36. Oh, my. Uh, Abby. 56 is correct. I assume you had 40 for the first answer. Okay, 56 is correct. Basically, you don't know how many are in the whole tank or how much the whole tank holds. So we can call it X. But we know that the tank is 5 eighths full, correct? Which means the 21 gallons equals what fraction of the tank class? 3 eighths. The 21 gallons is 3 eighths of the tank's capacity. Does that make sense? So if we say that 21 equals 3 eighths x, multiply by the reciprocal 8 thirds, and there's your 56 gallons total in the tank. All right, so Abby, we stay with you, and I believe you're the last hook. Did anyone else finish all of them? And I haven't called on you yet. Okay, so Abby was the last one who finished uh, before I called time. On Wednesday, the bus transported a total of 420 passengers. This number was 120% of the number of passengers transported on Tuesday. How many passengers were transported on Tuesday? 350 is correct. 420, it says that number was or equals 120% of Tuesday's passengers. We'll rewrite this as 1.2. Of means multiply, so times x. And all we have to do is divide by 1.2. And there's where we get our 350. All right, for perfection, the candy. Mrs. Hare the bus driver, received a pay rate of $8.70 per hour until she received a pay raise, which gave her $9.15 per hour. Find your percent of you increase to the nearest whole percent. 19%? Mm, that is not correct. All right. Um, let's go back to you for redemption. What did you get for the last one? 6%. Mm. 5% is correct. Remember to find percent of change or percent of increase or decrease. You put the change over the original. So what's the change, class, in her pay? 40, 70, 45 uh, cents an hour, right? Yeah. She went from 8 um, uh, 70 to 9.15, that's 45 cent change. Put that over the original, 8.70. Uh -huh. Of course, you could ignore the decimals. They would cancel out anyway. So if you do 45 divided by 870, I don't know what the exact decimal is. Josh is looking it up for me. 0 0.05. 0 0.0517, so the nearest whole percent, move the decimal twice, 5.17 or 5% is our answer there. All right, so no candy this time. Um, anyone perfect on all the ones you got done? You didn't finish them all, but you're perfect on the ones you did? All right, questions on any of these? Just kind of a diverse set of problems here, all in the theme of a bus driver. Any questions at all? All right, go ahead and pass those forward, if you would, please. Take your books out, open to page 119. You can also have your homework out. You did page 119, number five. Page 119, number five. Just keep them at the front of the row. I'll come get them in just a second. Page 119, 
numero cinco. And before we take a look at that homework proof that you did, let's go ahead and review some things from our last few lessons. Um, we kind of wrapped up our quadrilaterals. What was that final quadrilateral we spent some time looking at, Brandon? The trapezoid, right? We looked at several other quadrilaterals, the parallelogram, the rhombus, the square, the rectangle, which all of those were parallelograms anyway. And we looked at the trapezoid, and how does a trapezoid differ from a parallelogram, Michael? Um, a trapezoid only has two sides. Good. Parallel. Good. Only two sides <laughs> parallel, not both sets of sides parallel. Um, now, what if the uh, parallel sides were equal, class? What if the parallel sides were equal? It'd have to be a parallelogram, right? Because we proved if two sides are equal and parallel, it's a parallelogram. But what if the two non-parallel sides were equal? I mean, isosceles trapezoid, wouldn't it? What do we call those non-parallel sides, class? Legs. And the parallel sides are called the bases. Um, what is a median in a trapezoid, Lana? I was going to say middle, but it does kind of run through the middle. And when we think median, we always think like, middle. But how is it defined? I know it's been a, been a little bit. For those watching, we had a three-day weekend. So no, cut them a little slack. <laughs> I can't think of the word. Mm. Adam, what's the median of a trapezoid? Um, a parallel? parallel? It will happen to be, yes, Bracken? It joins the midpoints of the legs. And because it does, we proved that it will be, as Adam said, parallel to the bases. Uh, we also proved it would equal, anyone? Half, half, half the sum of the bases. We proved it would dot bisect the diagonals if we drew them. Uh, we also proved with a trapezoid, if it's isosceles, what would be true about the two angles at the lower base class? It'd be equal. What about the angles of the upper base? Mm -hmm. Also equal if it's an isosceles trapezoid. What would be true of the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid, Noah? Always, sometimes, never, class. The diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid bisect each other. Never, because if diagonals bisect, it has to be a parallelogram. We proved that. Oh. So it can't be bisect <laughs> each other. Diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid. Anyone? They have to be equal to each other. They always must be equal. Always, sometimes, never. If the diagonals of a quadrilateral are equal, it's an isosceles trapezoid. Sometimes, because it could also be a rectangle, remember. But if they're equal, it could be the isosceles trapezoid. It could be rectangle. Um, from there, we moved on to talking about all those other different polygons. And we had heptagons class, which had seven, seven sides. We had you know, dodecagons, which had oh, wow. 12 know. sides. We had nonagons, which had Nine. all kinds of different things. And we said if we wanted to find the sum of all the angles, we used a formula. What was that formula, Josh? Minus two times Good. And minus 2 times 180 degrees was our formula to find the sum of all the angles. Now, if the polygon's angles were all equal, class, we would say the polygon was Equiangular. Um, and then how would I find each individual angle then, Brecken? Could you take the n minus 2 straight angles or n minus 2 times 180 degrees, divide that by n, or you could say n minus 2 over n straight angles. Uh, from there, we looked at some what I call location theorems. And uh, we said that if a point is in the perpendicular bisector of a line, what must be true about that point? Lana? Equidistant from the ends of the line? It's equidistant from the ends of the line. If a point class is equidistant from the ends of a line, it must lie in the, perpendicular in the perpendicular bisector. If a point is in the bisector of an angle, Michael, it's equidistant from the sides of the angle. It is from the sides of the angle. In class, if a point is equidistant from the sides of an angle, it must lie in the angle bisector. And once we proved those, 
That led us to agree, and a couple of them, we, we just looked at the proof, right? That was already in the textbook. But once we had proven those, or at least discussed the proof of those, it led us to a discussion of multiple lines, three or more lines, all intersecting at the same point. In general, what do we call any three lines that all intersect at the same point? Abby? Um, concurrent. concurrent lines, good. And we talked about four sets of concurrent lines in triangles. And these four sets of concurrent lines gave us four different kinds of centers. Um, give me one of the sets of lines, first of all, that can all meet at the same point in a triangle. Dylan? I'm not looking for the center yet, just what, one of the sets of lines where if you drew all three of these, they would all meet at the same point. Okay. So Okay, perpendicular bisectors. If you drew the three perpendicular bisectors of a triangle, any triangle, they have to be concurrent. Um, what's another set of lines that if you drew them, they would all have to intersect? Angle bisectors will have to be concurrent in any triangle. That's correct. Uh, another group, Brandon? Altitudes. Altitudes all have to be concurrent in any triangle. Um, and then there's one more set. One more set of lines that all had to intersect. We said perpendicular bisectors will be concurrent. Angle bisectors will be concurrent. Altitudes will be concurrent. Medians. Medians will all be concurrent. Now, two of those sets of lines have to intersect inside the triangle. Two of those could intersect outside. Which two must intersect inside a triangle? There's no way they'll ever intersect outside. Can you think of it? We haven't talked about it yet. Brandon? I think one is angle bisectors. Angle bisectors will always fall inside the triangle. They have to. There's another set of lines that always fall inside. No, in fact, we looked at an example where with an obtuse triangle, the perpendicular bisectors fall outside. Oh. Altitudes could also fall outside in the case of a, a, um, a, a triangle like this, because this altitude, of course, is there. But uh, let's see, for this altitude to be perpendicular, you'd have to have an extension. And then for this altitude to be perfect, so you end up having these extensions here where the extensions would all end up meeting. So here, no, altitudes could fall outside. So angle bisectors fall inside, perpendicular bisectors could fall outside. Um, altitudes could fall outside, so class that leaves medians. medians. Medians will always fall inside as well. So let's see if we can keep the centers straight now. What do we call the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors class? The circumcenter. Because remember, if you do the perpendicular bisectors, every point in the perpendicular bisector class is equidistant from the ends of the line. Every point in the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the ends of the line. Every point in the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the ends of the line. And therefore, since this point is equidistant from the three of these, you can put a circle around or circum the triangle. We would say the circle class is circumscribed. 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 And then the triangle class we would say is inscribed. inscribed. Uh, what about the angle bisectors? Where do they meet? Angle bisectors. Uh, I heard it? No, not the orchestra. I thought I heard it. In center. The in center. Because remember, if you bisect angle, Bisect angle, bisect angle. Every point in this angle bisector class is equidistant from the um, sides. Side. Every point in this angle bisector equidistant from the side. every point in this angle bisector equidistant from the side. So this point is the same distance or perpendicular to all the sides, so that you could put a circle on the inside of the triangle. Now the altitude, when you think altitude class, you think perpendicular, right? Straight up and down. What should also be straight up and down, class? Your teeth. So we think straight up and down altitudes, that's the orthocenter. And then the last one was the medians. We said where the medians intersect is actually the true center of the triangle. We call that point class the centroid. And there was one triangle I said, all four of those points, circumcenter, centroid, orthocenter, and center, they're all going to be the same for a for an equilateral triangle. They will all be the same point. Um, after we talked a lot about that, we spent the last lesson really focused on proofs and how to do proofs. Remember we had some pages you dog-eared. 
um, back before you were gone for a few days, right? And we, we marked, okay, these are the different ways we prove this, prove that, how to prove the other, and some different strategies involved in proof. We also talked about some different approaches to completing a proof. And we said one approach to a proof is to look at what's given and say, well, if that's true, then this must be true. And if that's true, then this must be true. And if that's true, then this must be true. And you just keep saying what well, must be true until eventually you hope you end up where you're wanting to go. You hope you end up proving what you're supposed to prove. And sometimes that works. What's that approach that begins with the given and makes known statements until it reaches the desired conclusion? Adam? No. The other one. Reckon? The synthetic approach. What is it, class? Synthetic. The synthetic approach begins with what's given. It just makes known statements. The other approach is what he just said a moment ago. And where does the analytic method begin? Not with what's given, but mentally begins with what you're trying to... Again, these are different approaches to how to do a proof, how to prove things. Class analytic method begins with what you're trying to prove, prove, right? What are you trying to prove? <laughs> and it simply says, well, I could prove this if I could prove this. Why do I prove that? Well, I could prove this if I could prove this. How do I prove that? Well, I could prove this if I could prove this. Why do I prove that? Well, I could prove this if I could prove that. And it mentally traces a path backward to the given. So which one starts with the given and makes known statements, class? Synthetic. Synthetic. Which method begins with what you're trying to prove and kind of works backward mentally? Analytic. Analytic. And of course, you could, I guess, literally work backward on the proof. We've shown that a couple of times. But I said the best way to complete a proof is to do what, Noah? How so? Explain. You said both, and you're not wrong, but what do you mean by both? Specifically with the... Good. Start with a synthetic approach by at least getting all the claim statements. Once you get done with claim statements, don't belabor the point anymore. Don't stare at what you've got and be like, well, what else can I prove? Don't worry about that. Get your claim, and then once you're done with the claim, then switch from that synthetic start to the analytic approach and say, okay, now what am I trying to prove? What do I need to prove this? What do I need to prove this? Because having gotten the synthetic, you've got yourself mentally prepared to bridge the gap between the two. And that's going to be your best bet. You have a chance to practice with that all on page 119, exercise number five. Go and hold up your homework so that I can see that it is completed. Brecken's like flopping it around so I can't actually check. Yeah, I'm wise to you. All right, good, good. All right, now, <laughs> I, I'm not going to make fun of your sketching skills, Lana, only because of my arms much better. It's still not good draw. It is. It, well, you, what you can't always do is put the paper down on top of the book. If it's thin enough paper, it kind of trace over. Um, I, I can't do that, though, so I'm going to have to figure out what Lana struggled with here. So we've got this triangle, ABC, and it's a bit of an obtuse triangle in the picture. I don't know that that necessarily has to be true, but I'm going to draw it the way the book had it. So we have this triangle, ABC. And then we had a median playing CD. And then we had a line from B that was perpendicular at a point called E. And then we had this line had to be extended, this median had to be extended so that a perpendicular could meet it. At F. So we have a perpendicular here, we have another perpendicular here, and this is a median. So I've got quite a bit of claim going on. Um, so let me go ahead and get that down. So you were given triangle ABC, median CD, AF, and BE, perpendicular to CD. And we wanted to prove, we wanted to prove the two perpendiculars were equal. AF and BE are equal to each other. All right, so obviously you had your two columns, statements and reasons. And for sake of time, and you would never do this on a quiz or test, I'm just going to draw a little arrow like that. 
I would. Um, and the killing thing is it'd be free points, right? So that's why I specify, don't do this on a quiz or test. I'm just being lazy here. All right, you're not allowed to be lazy. One day when you're the teacher, you can be lazy. All right, clang, clang, and then, then there's going to be a third clang. So I'm going to get at least three more statements synthetically, just going off the given. What did you put first, Josh? Um, P is the midpoint of E. Bingo. If you have a median, well, what is a median? It's a line drawn from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So D is the midpoint of uh, ooh, EF? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know no, that. Of AB. Of AB. Reason? Um, definition of median. Definition of median. Now, I'm going to add just a little bit here. Median of a triangle. Mm -hmm. Only because there's a different definition for median of trapezoid versus median of triangle. So I am going to be specific here. Um, now, Josh, it looks like D is the midpoint of EF also. And in fact, we could prove that it is. But by definition, CD is a median of this triangle. So it's the mid midpoint of AB. What is then, as soon as he says midpoint, that's another claim. So what's a build? How many said it was a midpoint right off? Yeah. All right. What's the build off of the fact that we have a midpoint bracket? AD equals BD. Yeah, AD equals BD. Reason? <laughs> definition of a midpoint. All right, so there's some clang. There's another clang, and this one might have been even more obvious to you. The perpendicular. So what's a clang response that we could have had there, Lana? Mm. Oh, AF and B? Yeah, AF and B are perpendicular to C. Oh. What's the clang response to that? There's actually a couple claim responses now that I think about it. Mm, Adam Helper? Um. Perpendicular, clang. Uh, um, wait, wait. Um, right right, right angles. angles, there you go, Lana. We got some right angles. If they're perpendicular, I got a right angle here, I got a right angle here. I'm going to go ahead and call, the, well, this I can just say angle F. Right here, I'll go ahead and call these 1 and 2. And so, Lana, we can say that um, angle one and angle two. And angle F and are perpendicular. Well, oh, no, not the lines are perpendicular, so the angles are equal. No. Perpendicular lines form right angles. Right angles. So one, two, and F are all right, right angles. That's what we can say. And you didn't have to number them necessarily, but I will. Angle one, angle two, and angle F are right angles. Reason, Lana? Um, really, like, definition of perpendicular? Lines. Yep, definition of perpendicular lines. Now, building off of that, since they're all right angles, class, we could say... Anyone? All right, all right, all they're all equal. Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, again, just going synthetically, angle 1 equals angle 2 equals angle F, because all right angles are equal. There is another claim that I didn't initially think about, but I don't just have a perpendicular, which would give me right angles. I have two perpendiculars. And these two lines are both perpendicular to the same line. Thoughts, anyone? They're parallel to each other. I don't know if I need that, but does it hurt to state it? Not really. Why not say number six that uh, AF is parallel to B. Now, I'm, I do know you can do the proof without this statement. Uh, at least I'm reasonably certain you can. Um, but uh, it doesn't hurt to say that lines perpendicular to same line are parallel. Which is a quasi-clang in itself, right? Because you need more angles equal, right? You just don't know which angles we necessarily want. All right, let's pause there, because we've clang, clang, clanged for a bit. Let's look at what I'm trying to prove. I'm trying to prove that these two lines right here, I just said that they were parallel. I want to prove that they're equal to each other. How could I prove two lines are equal to each other? Michael? Um, if I could get a couple of triangles congruent and then use CPCTE, which two triangles would I like to have congruent 
here, Lana? Which two triangles, if they were congruent, would leave AF and BE equal? AF and BE. What? You said triangle ADF and EDB? All right. Does everyone see that if I can get these two triangles, ADF right here, the little bottom one, and EDB right here, if they were congruent, does everyone agree these two lines would have to be equal to each other? All right. The question is, what would it take to get congruent triangles? What are some of the ways I can prove that triangles are congruent? Abby? Um, uh, there's, um, sorry, I have a blank. ASA. ASA? SSS. SSS. SAA. Now, one of these I can rule out right away, class. SA. All right. Side, 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 right? Because if I'm trying to get these two sides equal, you're not going to already have all three sides equal. So let's rule out SSS right off the bat. By the way, could I use right triangle methods? Yes. I could if I took the time to say that because I have right angles, I have right triangles. Because I got the angles equal to each other, though, I might as well just roll with these methods. So it's kind of one or the other. Anyway, <laughs> kind of a noisy kid on the stairwell there. Um, uh, but yeah, so if, if I say I have right triangles, use the right triangle methods. If I say all the right angles are equal, use those as one of the angles along the way. So I've got at least the right angles equal already. I also have these two sides equal from definition of a midpoint. So you see, I either need another set of angles equal or I need another set of sides equal. Either of those would work. This is what we call the analytic approach. We're thinking through what is missing to get congruency. Because if I can get congruency, I can get CPCTE. What could I get equal here? I've already got some equal angles in F and 1. I already have equal sides in AD and BD. What other angles or sides could I get equal to get the congruent triangles here? Brecken? So call this angle 3 and call this angle 4? Because? Sure, I could say that angle 3 equals angle 4 because vertical angles are equal. And just like that, I've got an extra pair of angles. Now the question is, with the extra angle, is this angle side angle or is it side angle angle? Noah? Which one? Yeah, this is side angle angle if I do it that way. So that's the way I would do it. Could I have gotten, I'm going to call this 5 and this 6. Could I have gotten 5 and 6 equal anyone? Yes. How so? If you took the time to say you had parallels, then you could have alternate interior angles equal. In which case, I wouldn't have needed to say I had right angles and therefore I wouldn't have had to say those equal because I could have had angle side angle instead with the vertical angle. So there's a number of ways to do the proof as long as either through angle side angle or side angle angle you got it. We're going to roll with the three and four here. So I'm going to say side angle angle number eight triangle A, D, F is congruent to, and now I'm going to look at the lettering. What corresponds to the angle here at A class? Mm -hmm. The angle here at B. Five and six corresponds. I'm going to put the B. What corresponds to the angle at D? The other angle at D. And uh, obviously then what corresponds to the angle at F? The angle up here at E. So we'll say BDE uh, is congruent. And we said by doing it this way specifically, that side angle angle. And if the triangles are congruent, class? AF equals BE by CPCTE. AF equals BE by C, P, C, T, E. I happened not to use statement six at all. Okay, the way we did it, so we should have done it in eight steps. I could have used this, and I could have said that angle five equals angle six, in which case I would not have needed either of these statements, which still would have gotten it in eight steps. Um, I think it's about the main two ways to do it. How many took about those eight steps or so? Maybe nine like I did. All right. How many feel like, even if you didn't do it exactly this way, you did it one of the ways I've described. You felt like you nailed it. Well, I tried to get congruent <clears throat> triangles first, but I'm going to All right. Does it make sense that the congruency, it's not the end goal, but it's nearly the end goal. 
Once I've got the congruency, man, CPCG, and I've got those two lines equal. All right, any questions, comments? Brandon? How come in the book, they have the two lines not equal to each other? Yeah, that is, that is a bit of an oversight. I think they were trying to help you out and say, hey, you're going to want to get these two lines equal. But you're right, it wasn't given that they were equal. So I would not mark them equal until you've said in the proof that they are. So yeah, I, on quizzes and tests, I will not mark things equal until they actually are given equal. And very rarely will I give you things equal. Usually you're going to have to extrapolate them equal like we did here. From the median means midpoint, midpoint means equal. Yeah, good question. Good. Any other questions, comments on number five? Yes, sir. I see. So you saw it and you just kind of assumed it was given because the picture had it given. So you probably did it in what, six steps? Okay, gotcha. So the book kind of led you astray. We're going to blame the book for this one? Okay, all right. Scapegoat, that's all you need. All right. All right, good. Any other questions, comments? All right.